this fantastic military saber. I have to have everybody over here to move. You are a moving target, sir. You must leave. Any special skills they need? Oh, absolutely. Now, while they can have a good tennis arm or a good golf swing, what really would be great is if they played polo. A polo play. player? I got a polo player. <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. Vincent Chase, Dave Poland. Come on up here. Dave, Dave. What you want to do is hold it like this and go with the bow end. Yes, you have to hold it. That's right. You're going to start here and you're going to aim for this and slice it right off. Come on. Pleased to have the diva with us this morning, Christine Ansbacher. Thanks Good for morning, coming everyone. in. You know, one thing that uh, always happens with me, what do you do with a stubborn cork? Here's what you do. You get a cork pop. Watch this. One second. Holy cow! That easy. A corkscrew, 16th century technology. Why would we use that when you have a cork pop so that, that has? Sucks that baby out of there. It has a canister of inert gas oh, that, wow. when you put it in and squeeze it, oh, the wow. gas forces it to come up in one second. With the holidays coming, we need quick ways to open. I'm Christine Onswacher. I'm so glad you could join me this afternoon. The name of our tasting is New World versus Old World. New World, California, what you're used to are fruit bombs, big, juicy wines with a lot of fruit. We love that. In France, that same wine is subtle and has more flavors than just fruit. I'm serving them to you blind. You're going to decide for yourselves and say, well, now I know the difference between these two styles. Which one is which? One is Sauvignon Blanc from New Zealand, and the other is a Sauvignon Blanc from France and it's called Sancerre. I remember the name because I just think sincere, and I sincerely like Sauvignon Blanc. <laughs> How many think the first wine is the old world? You're right. <laughs> many people here, you've got it absolutely right. Here's our final toast. Good wine is a daily necessity, right? Yes. But you know what I like to say, and maybe you agree, a meal without wine is called breakfast. Cheers. You can actually buy a $10 bottle of Cabernet and turn it into a $30 tasting wine, right? Absolutely. Okay. And all you have to do is play tag. TAG okay. stands for temperature, aeration, and glassware. Any one of these three, but all three together, will make your wine taste super. Okay. So what you need to do is first throw a temperature tantrum. What you need to do is take a room temperature bottle at 70 degrees and send it skinny dipping for about 10 minutes <laughs> in an ice bucket. Okay. That brings the temperature down to what a wine cellar would okay. be. After 10 minutes in an ice bucket, you take this Cabernet out and then you aerate it. You limber it up uh -huh. by pouring it into, even if it's an orange juice pitcher, it doesn't matter. All you're trying to do is see those bubbles at the bottom? Yeah. That's what you want to create. Then you're ready and you reach for your big red wine glass. Okay. Ah. Then when you pour it in, you're getting more aeration. You're softening it up even more. Look at all those bubbles. Oh. And then you take your wine, you swirl it around, more aeration. And what this causes is all these aromas to waft upward. That's what swirling is all about, just getting more flavor. Mm. And then you're ready to drink it. Delighted to have you here tonight. The name of our tasting is Champagne Celebrities from 1600s to today. Champagne has had a long and colorful history since it was enjoyed 400 years ago. Tonight, you'll discover why the phrase developed to make a toast before you enjoy champagne. You'll find out why we say something after we propose a toast. Then you'll discover why Madame Veuve Clicquot cut dozens of holes in her dining room table. Then I'll tell you tales about Dom Perignon, Oscar Wilde, Napoleon, Winston Churchill, Mae West, Marilyn Monroe, and Madonna. All of these people enjoyed champagne, and they have something to say on the subject. How do you avoid that red wine headache so many people comp complain about? Two solutions. One, it may be caused by the antihistamines on the grape skins. So what do you need to take? An antihistamine. Hmm. Non-drowsy. 
and the other thing is if there is if you're really sensitive to tannin in wine you need to dial down from Cabernet to Pinot Noir or even lower down to other wines. I want to buy wines that I can go to the store, age in the back seat of the car, and drink the same night, right? <laughs> right, that's what most of us want. And would you open this bottle? Thank you. Good. Okay, just hold this around like that. Good. Push it down. Push it down. Good. Okay. That's because you're not standing up. If you're standing up, it would work a lot faster. You need to go to the gym, girl. <laughs> you have to press down on it. Yes, that's, that's, that's it. Yes! Look at that. Is that amazing? That's awesome. Have you ever swirled before? Yes. Yes. But never like this. Plant your thumb, and now just do the hula. Come on. Do the hula with that glass. Come on. Get that wine twirling around in your glass. And don't forget my motto, a meal without wine is called what? Breakfast. Breakfast. Thank you so much. Look at the wine stains, oh, but yes. you've got some tips for yes, us. Yes, I do. Okay. Club soda will not do you any good. Are what you, you serious? What you need to do is make a solution of high acid products, either lemon and water or white vinegar and water, or just pull out that bottle of Sauvignon Blanc. Yeah. But if you're lucky enough to have this new product called Wine Away. Yeah, Wine Away is great. Not that I know anything about that. <clears throat> we're going to put this on, and in a minute, we're going to come back to this stain, and you're going to see it will vanish. I call this part of the seminar KISS. Not keep it simple, stupid. No, absolutely not. Keeping it sexy and seductive, yes. <laughs> because, after all, red is the color of love. So forget the flowers, forget the candy, and bring a bottle of red wine to dinner or give it as a gift because that shows much more thought in picking out an unusual bottle than sending flowers or here are the chocolates. So the first one I want to introduce you to is from Italy and it's called Primitivo, primitive. It's not a polished, elegant wine, but it's a mouthful and it's very inexpensive, very reasonable, about $10 a bottle. This is a beautiful alternative to Cabernet. The name of the grape is Tempranillo, temperamental. This is a redhead who is temperamental. That's how you might rem uh, remember that. Yeah. And you know, leftover wine is like house guests. It starts to fade after a day. <laughs> it starts to go bad. It right? starts to go bad. So we need to find ways to save our wine so that five days later it's still fresh. And you know what? Here are two ways sitting in our refrigerator right here. The first is take a screw cap and empty out the, the contents of a Perrier bottle or a beer bottle, uh -huh. wash out the bottle, mm -hmm. dry it, and then use that Oh, to as, store your wine? Yes, to so store your wine. fill it up with wine and screw the cap back That's on. right, and because, then you, now you, because you know they're airtight. Right. Oh, yeah, Excellent. okay. See? And then these are even better, huh? That's right, the, the beer. And, and manufacturers of sparkling wine and beer know that if they will need to preserve their product for five days, right. ten days a week, Wow. This is what they need to now, use. What's this old fellow oh, right here? Oh, well, I'd like you to try that. Okay. Oh, this is called, oh, sorry, <laughs> the wine reserver. It's wine preserver. <laughs> that's right. It's private preserve. Okay. And it's actually inert gas that we're going to put in here like this, spray it. On top and of the what wine it does on top of the there. wine. Uh -huh. So actually, this inert gas is like a blanket on top of the wine, and I just tuck the wine into bed. And it locks the uh, air, the, the oxygen out, that's so the right. wine is preserved. Absolutely. Okay. okay, do you consider, I think I know the answer to this, wine an aphrodisiac? Oh, I certainly do. Because? It's, because it not only livens up your taste bud, it sets the mood. It helps you relax. It's actually a catalyst to transform a hurried meal into a dinner that you linger over, relaxing, mm. getting you in the mood for love. Is there kinds of wines that you want to talk about this morning when I say K-I-S-S, -S, sexy and seductive? Can you name some brands that you would, would offer up today? Absolutely. There are Italian Lothario's for, say, $75 oh. a bottle and up, okay. and that's Amaroni, Brunello. Yes. Then you have the French Flirts, $50, $25 a bottle. That's the Rosé Champagne, Red Burgundy, Red Bordeaux, delicious wines. Then you have the All-American Romantics, Syrah. Pinot Noir. Mm -hmm. And of course we have sparkling wines here as well. Oh, and wow. then yeah. Latin lovers like Malbec. The wine diva herself joins us this morning. Christine Ansbacher, thanks so for being with us today. I'm so glad to be here. Red wine, instead of serving it at 70, 75 degrees, our room temperature mm -hmm. today, we want it cool the way it was 200 years ago okay. in a room. So what do we do? We have a temperature tantrum. We 
Okay. Take this bottle and we send it skinny dipping in an ice bucket Ooh. for 10 minutes. You'll pull this bottle out and she'll be at cellar temperature, the perfect serving temperature today. And it'll taste like a $34 bottle.